Why do your feet smell so horrible? Well, hey guys, if you are dealing with smelly feet so bad that people are making comments, oh my gosh, what is that smell? This is the video for you. Not only am I going to explain why your feet smell so bad, but I'm gonna tell you how to get rid of it once and for all. Body odor in general tends to be largely due to the breakdown of our sweat by bacteria that naturally live on our skin, especially in areas of chronic friction where there's a lot of moisture trapping, namely in the skin folds, right? Like under the arms. But it's not uncommon for people's feet to smell a little funky from time to time. And yes, that largely can be just the result of the breakdown of sweat from your feet, because there are a lot of sweat glands down there uh, by the bacteria that normally live there. But some people will experience a bout of malodorous feet where the odor is so strong, so off-putting, that it's above and beyond just simple funky foot smell from time to time. And that is a condition called pitted keratolysis. In contrast to most types of odor, which again, are due to the breakdown of sweat by bacteria that naturally live on your skin, this is actually a bacterial infection of the skin of the feet. And it happens in people who tend to put themselves in conditions where they are exposed to a lot of moisture. For example, people who work in damp conditions where their feet are in water, or people who are really active and do sweat a lot, so much so that their feet are trapped in sweaty socks and shoes. That moisture ends up leading to a lot of maceration of the thick skin on the bottoms of our feet. As the skin becomes hyperhydrated from all that moisture, the barrier function there drops and the skin becomes colonized with different types of bacteria that become rather problematic. Pitted keratolysis gets its name from the fact that these little bacteria that come in in this situation, they chew up the mounds of macerated skin on the bottoms of your feet and create these little pits. The pits may not be obvious to you, but if you get your feet wet, they become a lot more noticeable. The skin on the feet that is most affected by this tends to be the weight-bearing areas, like your heels, the balls of your feet. Carinibacteria and Chytococcus sedentarius, for example, are common types of bacteria that cause this, but there are a few others. These bacteria, they thrive in moist, humid conditions. That is why this tends to occur on the feet and people who have various risk factors for a lot of moisture by their feet. But why the heck does this bacterial infection smell so foul, you might be wondering. Well, the bacteria, they make these enzymes that again, chew up the stratum corneum, which again is quite thick on the bottoms of your feet, they chew it up, and as they do that, it releases these sulfur compounds that smell quite strong. So there you have it. That is what is leading to the odor. It's not the breakdown of sweat by bacteria, but rather the breakdown of stratum corneum keratin protein by bacteria that are not supposed to be there in the first place. They got there, they became comfortable there from all of the moisture. Pitted keratolysis can happen in anyone at any age, but it is definitely a lot more common in men compared to women. It commonly affects athletes and people whose occupation requires them to stand for a prolonged period of time, particularly in uh, maybe hot, humid conditions. Maybe your feet are exposed to water from time to time, or people who have to wear rubber boots or vinyl shoes. People who wear shoes that are poorly fitted, that cause a lot of friction, that friction and trapping of sweat impairs the barrier there and that can create a favorable environment. People who have poor foot hygiene, like maybe they neglect to wash their socks. Having diabetes and or obesity is also a risk factor for developing pitted keratolysis. And sometimes the little pits can be surrounded by this brownish discoloration, so it makes the feet almost look dirty. And the feet can be very slimy. For the most part, there are no associated symptoms other than, of course, your quality of life being impacted by the odor. But for some people, it can be very itchy and it can sometimes even be painful. A subset of people will also have 
other bacterial skin infections. So when you see your doctor, they should examine other body surfaces. For example, the bacteria that can cause this can also take up shop in your skin folds. So if you're somebody who works in a really hot, humid, sweaty climate, you may also be getting little skin infections under the arms called erythrasma. It's a bacterial infection that happens in the skin folds. And you may also develop a bacterial infection on the hairs under your arm or in the groin, the pubic area. It's called trichomycosis axillaris. You get these little nodules on the hair shafts. Depending on the bacteria that causes this, sometimes if we take a special lamp called a woods lamp and look at the feet, they may fluoresce coral red, but that is not 100% guarantee. All right, so if you have it, how the heck do you get rid of it? Getting rid of it, treating it, is something that requires a two-fold approach. First, treating the bacteria and getting them to go away. And second, treating the associated risk factors. So the good news is the bacteria are pretty easy to get rid of. Um, a prescription topical antibiotic, such as clindamycin or erythromycin, can be helpful, as can benzoyl peroxide, which you can buy over the counter without a prescription. In some cases, benzoyl peroxide plus one of these prescription antibiotics may be necessary. But generally speaking, these bacteria are pretty easy to get rid of with these treatments. The nice thing about benzoyl peroxide though is that not only is it antibacterial, but it also has some keratolytic properties, meaning it will help dissolve some of that macerated, impaired skin and kind of help to smooth things out, uh, making it less favorable for the bacteria to reside. But you can't just treat the bacteria, you have to also treat the root cause, the risk factors that create a favorable environment. So here are some tips if you deal with this. Avoid prolonged use of occlusive footwear. Make sure that you change out of sweaty socks. Make sure after you remove your socks, you wash them. 60 degrees Celsius water plus soap to kill associated bacteria. Wear proper fitting shoes. Wearing shoes that don't fit you right, that are not supportive, that cause a lot of friction, lead to more maceration and a cascade of events that can trigger recurrences. Because again, that leads to a favorable environment for those little bacteria. Make sure you're wearing absorbent cotton socks that wick away moisture, and that you're changing them frequently. Wash your feet daily. That may sound obvious, but it is a territory where actually some people neglect to thoroughly wash their feet. Consider using an antiperspirant to your feet. Antiperspirants contain aluminum, which helps to reduce the outflow of sweat. Remember, excessive sweating leads to maceration and moisture, which are favorable for those bacteria to come back. And you may be wondering, should I just take my regular antiperspirant that I use under my arms and rub it on my feet? In this case, I would say no, because you don't want to you know, accidentally transfer those bacteria from your feet under your arms. You could get, well, erythrasma. But they do make antiperspirant lotions that are for the palms and soles. Um, I'm not sponsored by this company, but I personally have tried and used the product myself. I get it on Amazon, it's called Sweat Block. Um, now it feels a little strange going on, almost kind of like sticky, kind of a chalky sensation, but it's pretty effective. I um, have found that it helps, it really can help cut down on the outflow of sweat. Put it on at nighttime, that way the aluminum salts have a fighting chance of really getting down into those sweat glands. If you put it on in the morning and put your shoes on and stuff, you're gonna rub it off and it's not gonna have a chance to localize down in the sweat glands. So put it on at night before you go to bed. That way while you're asleep, uh, it has a chance to get down in the sweat gland and ultimately it reduce the outflow of sweat down there. Make sure you're not sharing footwear with other people because you know you can easily pass this to someone else. Now, for those of you who struggle with hyperhidrosis, that's the medical term for excessive sweating, um, you may wanna see a board certified dermatologist for treatment of your hyperhidrosis. Various treatments can be pursued, such as, well, topical antiperspirants, which we already touched on. Anyone can use those if they just happen to have sweaty feet. Also, a medication that can reduce sweat output called glycopyrrolate or oxybutynin. These are anticholinergics. Also, there is a strategy called iontophoresis, something you can even do at home uh, that can help. 
and there is also Botox injections. I have videos on treatments for hyperhidrosis, but it, people who have hyperhidrosis, excessive sweating, they are predisposed to pitted keratolysis. And treating the hyperhidrosis is key to treating the pitted keratolysis. So that is how it is treated. The good news is that it can be treated, and once it's treated, it typically goes away within two to four weeks. If you do not treat it, however, it can persist for years and years. It can get worse. In some cases, it can spontaneously go away. Maybe certain circumstances in your life change, you move somewhere that's a lot drier and it spontaneously goes away. But for the most part, treatment is necessary, but treatment works, it goes away. And then you don't have to have malodorous feet, which having malodorous feet can really impact your quality of life. I have had people who deal with this condition and they're Family members not only are getting on them, but people at work are starting to comment. Yeah, I mean, that really is stressful to go through. So I really hope this video was helpful to you, especially since we are coming upon the hotter, sweatier months. It's already here in Houston. Um, it never really leaves, to be honest. But anyway, if this video was of use to you, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.